Hi Mandra Armstrong, welcome to the back office. You might have seen me trying to deal with one of these and really figuring out that there's not really much value doing that. However, apparently there is a process called lapping where you actually take the top of the chip, um, sand it down in case the chip's got sort of a weird convex or concave shape. And uh, we're gonna do that using a piece of glass or a glass chopping board. This is actually the bottom of a 3D printer, which I had lying around. And I have a big bag of abrasive compounds, which were used for car bodywork, but any sort of abrasive will do. This is really fine, actually. Maybe a little bit thicker grit than that. But first things first, let's measure the temperature before and after. Okay, now that's out of the way, there's another thing you're gonna need, and what I've got here is a block of dense foam. So find something foamy and good. You want that foamy goodness because you're gonna use it to wedge into the bottom of the chip, you know, where the pins are, because you don't wanna damage those. So we're gonna just plop that there on the bottom and use it as a kind of block to move that around the abrasive. So we're gonna grab a bit of abrasive now. So we've got a little selection here. We've got some oh, 80 grit. That's insanely abrasive. Actually, let's try some 80 grit because that is sort of exactly the kind of abrasive you're going to find in your sort of garage, you know, your, your dad's garage or something. So I'm going to use the piece of glass. If you're using a chopping board, by the way, that's got feet, make sure it's upside down because you don't want it to flex. This is like a double skin piece of glass. So it's going to be pretty, pretty sort of solid. So I'm just going <laughs> to very gingerly go around in circles. I mean, at the end of the day, you're just sanding a piece of metal, right? So I don't think you can really go too far with this. Just as long as it's flat, as long as you don't bend those pins. So I'm using the uh, foamy block because it's sort of distributing the force over all those pins individually. So it should be okay. Not too much force. Let the sandpaper do the work. It's definitely getting darker. Right, let's have a little look, see, shall we? Oh, look. It's now a sort of ghost phantom chip. Nothing on there. And you can see there's a sort of copper colour now starting to come through on the edges. So you can just sort of hit it again now with a bit more. Let's even get that coppery finish. Yeah! Now we're cooking. Interestingly enough though, you can see around the edges, there's definitely more wear around the edges here. So, hmm, I can see the copper colored there. I don't, don't suppose you could see that through the video, but definitely there's a pinky hint around this edge. So uh, that kind of suggests that this certainly isn't wearing um, evenly as I'm doing. It might just be because I'm putting extra forces on the edges as I'm sort of spinning it around. But, uh, it could also mean that the actual top of the sort of CPU isn't that flat. So I'm going to swap now to a different sort of level of paper now because I think there's only so much you can get out of this 80 grit. It's crazy, crazy uh, abrasive. So let's have another look, see. We've got a selection, a whole big selection actually, but uh, We've got some 600 grit here and a thousand. So just to show you what the different grits is, 600 and a thousand. They're pretty much um, as smooth as you like, really. But we're going to go for the 600 this time. Woo! Now this feels completely different, like it's virtually doing nothing compared to the uh, whatever that was, 80 grit. but you can see it's, it's really super smooth now. So I'm gonna just put some water down. This is just regular water, nothing too fancy. Got ourselves a bit of a tissue here. Let's get back clean. So it's certainly not, you know, shiny polished. I kind of would, I kind of think if you wanna get it to like a sort of mirror-like shine, you're gonna to have to do a lot more work found some 120 grit. I think I want to keep going actually. Woo. 
really coppery now. It's going to take a while though to get a mirror-like finish. <laughs> a hell of a lot of time to do a mirror-like. Yep, your forearms will feel it. That's how you know you're doing a good job. I'm leaving my coppery residue all over the shop. Look at that. I think that's probably about as smooth and as shiny as I'm going to get, but it is, it is almost mirror-like. I wonder if there's anything in the... Uh, in my kitchen for cleaning you know brassware that might just get that out a little bit more maybe some sort of scratch if you've got the uh, scratch remover paste for a car that might do it too let's go and have a quick look found some silver polish mmm smells old oh Not quite sure what I'm gonna do with this but uh, gonna spread that round it's basically some sort of spirit, like white spirit turpentine or something with some sort of grit in it. So I'm just going to run it straight on this piece of glass. Yeah, that's not... Ah, That's a good sign. Look, you could probably lift the glass up just through suction alone. That must be it's pretty smooth. But I'm just going to use the tissue now and just sort of work that in. I don't think... I don't think you can wrap it on that in that same way. And I've actually got it all over the edge, so be uh, a lot more careful than I am and use it very sparingly in fact let's clean that up before we totally destroy this CPU in fact I can see a bent leg on this we'll have to sort him out in a second again some deep gouges on that CPU where I think there must have just been some grit from one of the earlier grades of paper lying around yeah that's pretty pretty shiny now I know it's not mirror like I mean I think gonna have to you know use a polishing wheel to really work that to a mirror but that's good you have to have a lot of patience if you're gonna do it by hand and a lot of uh, a lot of different grits and cutting compounds but yeah I guess the problem is now I'm polishing it this way it might not be quite as flat but I, I doubt that's gonna to be too much because this is really this isn't gonna take anything off but you can see it's that dirtiness on the tissue is it you know is this sort of silver polish taking off a very fine layer hmm yeah I think I think that's about as good as we're gonna get I know it's probably hard to tell on camera but actually I'm pretty uh, happy with this on under the right light you can actually see uh, see almost see your reflection in fact you can it's almost mirror like so with a bit more work you could get it you could get it into a mirror finish actually you can see the uh, reflection there probably just about of these tweezers in it yeah that's pretty pretty damn good um, considering how little care I've sort of taken in doing it you know I've tried to make sure that the CPU is not damaged but I'm not really trying to get a mirror on that but yeah I think that's uh, that's a pretty fan job. Nothing left to do but to uh, try it out. Well, looky there. Absolutely no difference. So it's a funny thing, these CPUs. You know, you can do you know, all sorts of things to them and play with them and overclock them. And, you know, these are marginal gains. But I'm glad I've had a play. Glad I've sort of had a go all you guys who are dedicated to the cause keep enjoying your hobby um, for me I just want a working computer so if anything I might just underclock my computers from now on but uh, hope that's been of uh, some use to you please comment down below click like and subscribe if you're that way inclined and as ever thanks for watching That doesn't sound right. No!